you probably feel quite overwhelmed by the sheer amount of different guitar exercises out there. How in the world are you supposed to fit all of these workouts in a daily routine? And more importantly, how do you actually make sure that you're not completely wasting your time with some of them? These exact questions actually inspired me to find the absolute best guitar exercises out there. So since we are over 200 episodes in already, I prepared a special tier list today and we will rank some very popular exercises together. The results actually might shock you a bit. So by the end of this video, you will have the perfect tools to create a practice routine that greatly accelerates your progress instead of wasting your time with exercises that get you absolutely nowhere. All right, let's start with the classic topic of finger exercises. Okay, so this one is a quite important one right away. If you take a quick look at some of the older footage on the channel around 2019, you can definitely see that I still had some problems with my fretting hand control, especially with my pinky finger. And this is something that you might be familiar with. I always felt like my fretting hand can't really keep up with the fast picking. So working on exercises just like this, and this one actually might be one of my absolute favorites, has brought me absolutely incredible results over those three years. I mean, if you look at a direct comparison, it's really night and day. So yeah, I think I would move this one to daily, actually. I don't mean that you should practice this exact exercise until the day you die, but the topics of finger control, economy of motion and finger independence are so incredibly important for anything you plan to do with the instrument. So even if it's just five or 10 minutes of exercises like this in your routine, trust me, it will make a huge difference with your technique. And I certainly don't regret working on this. So this is definitely not a waste of time. Okay, next exercise. Oh. Ah, that's another good one. Okay, so what do we have here? This really awesome exercise is about playing different arpeggio shapes, but maybe you've seen it already. The big twist with this exercise is that you're not working with sweep picking. So your pick is not sweeping across the strings like when you're strumming a chord. You're really alternate picking all of this. So downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke, and so on. And that's a really effective workout for your alternate picking motion because you normally play two notes per string with pentatonic licks. <laughs> or three notes per string with modal licks, for example. But with the majority of this exercise and with the way these shapes work, you're mostly playing one note per string. So if you're sometimes getting stuck in between the strings with your alternate picking, I have to say this one is once again a really, really great choice for your practice routine. But the question is, how will we rank this one? So I guess one thing that's maybe not that good about this one is when we start to think about the practical application of this. This exercise is played at around 120 beats per minute. That's actually where it starts to get really tricky with the alternate picking approach. And when I personally have to play arpeggios sections that are much faster than that. Of course, I'm going for sweep picking. So that's one argument that kind of speaks against this one a little bit, but still I do have to say it's a really, really good workout. And I do think that exercises like this one really helped me with my string transitions. So I guess I have to rank this one here. In case you checked out last week's video, right now I'm opening my practice routines with a similar pattern. <laughs> So I think it's a great challenge and a great warm up and you should do this on a regular basis. In case you didn't see last week's episode, you actually missed out on some really important exercises and guitar tips. So in case you are new here, or maybe you've seen my face a couple of times by now, make sure to subscribe right now to get the most out of your practice routines from now on. Okay, I think up next we have a rhythm exercise. Ah, okay, so yeah, those are the groups of three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. I also have a really cool variation of this one where you tie those groups of three together. Sounds pretty brutal. So instead of seeing a 4-4 four, four measure as two groups of four eighth notes or maybe four groups of two eighth notes, I end up with four groups of three that I accent, so four odd groups. Notice that the third one is extended into the second measure, which is especially cool. But when it comes to actual technique or timing benefits, I think there are much better exercises out there. So when it's just about this exercise, I think I would rank it right here. Of course, that doesn't concern the entire topic of timing and rhythm, which is incredibly important. But when it comes to working on very specific patterns like this one, I I do think that you understand the concept after just working a couple of days or maybe a week on that. Okay, so this is one of my favorite topics. Okay, so this is a quite famous Paganini piece. And this topic concerns the idea of taking challenging and actually quite awesome sounding classical pieces as technique exercises. So this is how it sounds like played much slower. 
And I think you can immediately see in the notation right here why classical pieces make amazing guitar technique workouts, especially picking technique related. I think when those pieces were written, Paganini wasn't really thinking, well, I'm more of a three note per string guy and not so much of a two note per string pentatonic scale guy. In this measure, you can see two notes per string, followed by one note per string, then you have three notes per string, then just one note per string once again until the end. And that, of course, requires extreme control when it comes to your alternate picking and string transitioning skills. I think one of the projects that actually pushed me the most over the last couple of years was arranging and playing the entire 24th Paganini Caprice. <laughs> If you're into crazy technical guitar playing and into classical or neoclassical shredding, I really recommend checking it out on Spotify. The link is in the description. Also make sure to follow me on Spotify. There's something really exciting coming to the platform very soon. So yeah, I think this is another worthy contender for a daily spot in your practice routine, actually. Of course, if you're not planning on becoming a classical or neoclassical guitar player, you don't have to work on classical workouts every single day. But I think picking workouts with odd patterns across all strings are really, really great for your technique and for your transitions. And I guess the easiest way of finding ones that actually sound really, really good is by studying classical music. Okay, so the next one is actually quite interesting because it revolves around music theory and the caged system that you might have heard about. The idea with this one is learning and unlocking the fretboard by studying the different cage shapes across the neck. So you're really just playing the C major chord in this position on the neck. So arpeggio. Major pentatonic scale. then the C major scale. First of all, music theory-wise, you start to understand the connection between chords, arpeggios and scales. You're always just starting out with the chord for each shape, then you're playing the arpeggio, the pentatonic scale, and then the full heptatonic scale. And I think every player should be at least a bit familiar with the cage system. You should know what this is about. So if you want to dig into this a bit more, you can find the full workout on Patreon. But right now we have to rank this one. I think I already know how you guys and girls would rank it since a lot of you are not exactly excited about music theory. And I have to admit this is also not something I'm going through every single day. It's one of those things that you do for a while and then you feel like, okay, you have it under your fingers, you understand the concept. So I guess I would rank this one right here in the middle and I'm going with occasionally because after a couple of months when you're improvising and you didn't work on some of these shapes for quite a while, it just really pays off to go through that once again in your routine and then you will have it unlocked for the next couple of weeks and months. All right, let's move to technique once again. I think that's more exciting for most of you. This one is actually also quite interesting. Maybe you can see the twist right away. You're playing four notes per string. So that requires some stretching with the fretting hand, as you can see. But the reason why this is really cool is because it allows you to play very fast groups of four sixteenth notes on each string. So aside from the obvious technique benefits like picking really fast and working on your finger technique, this could be really helpful for you creatively as well if you feel like you're a bit stuck always playing three note per string or two note per string stuff. So this is not really something I'm working on every single day since I don't need it that often, but I would love to work on it much more and to feature it much more on the channel. So I think this would be another occasional topic in a typical practice routine. And this exercise that I just showed you is actually a great way of getting started with it. By the way, as always, you can download much slower exercise play along videos, backing tracks and guitar profiles for all of these workouts on patreon.com slash So make sure to get all your practice files for your next routine and join our awesome, super friendly and progress driven guitar community on Patreon today if you're serious about getting better as fast as possible. The next topic is actually really exciting. It's something very specific again, string skipping. This is one of my personal favorite string skipping exercises. Since you're skipping strings right here, you're moving from low notes to very high notes and back to low notes. And that makes your phrasing a bit more interesting and actually quite unpredictable sometimes. And it always reminds me a bit of piano players because of the big interval jumps. This is another one I would love to position right here in between often and occasionally. But when it comes to actually practicing string skipping, I guess I mostly do this when I'm improvising, just testing out new phrasing ideas. And I don't specifically work on exercises like this every single day. So maybe that's another occasional topic. So right here. Ah, okay, so this one is a classic. Most of you guys and girls are hopefully familiar with this one. Yes, this one once again. In case you're not familiar with this workout, what I'm doing right here is I'm playing seven notes 
across all strings. I chose to work on this one a couple of years ago because I wanted to introduce some more odd note groupings into my playing. So you're starting the first string with this sequence, then the sequence looks like this, then back to the first sequence and so on. And that was my first introduction to the very important topic of string transitions. And I don't even have to think twice about where I'm placing this. If you're subscribed to this channel, this probably won't be a surprise to you as well, but this one goes right here into the daily tier. I still love to open my alternate picking practice block with this exercise because it's a great endurance workout for my picking hand. I'm working on the string transitions and on the odd note groupings and also on my timing because as soon as things get fast it's really difficult to play groups of seven. <laughs> All right, we got time for two more today. Yes, of course, we also have to talk about sweep picking today. Yeah, this is a really cool sweep picking pattern and exercise in eighth note triplets. And the reason why I really like to recommend this one is because I constantly keep seeing exercises where the arpeggios are just played ascending and descending, so up and down, up and down and so on. But as you might know, the trickiest skill when it comes to sweep picking and also what will make your patterns really stand out is switching between different directions while you're in the middle of playing an arpeggio. Just like with alternate picking, the string transitions are really difficult here. So in my case, workouts like this one would go right here into the daily tier because I work on it every single day but since it's a very specific technique also genre specific i guess it might make more sense to place it right here in the often tier all right the last one is incredibly important and probably one of my personal favorites surprisingly it's not a picking technique topic it actually concerns the fretting and once again yes legato so that looks like a relatively simple workout when you look at it for the first time. But there's a great timing twist in there and this is what I teased a little bit earlier. So you always have a quick burst of 16th note triplets right in there after 4 16th notes. And of course you're not allowed to rush or drag as soon as you switch to the other group. And what absolutely transformed my fretting hand in addition to the finger workouts we talked about earlier in the video is working a lot on legato in my practice routine. This is something I work on every day for at least 20 to 30 minutes because of the huge impact it had on my playing so far. So as you can see with the exercise Size, I'm only plucking every single string once and the rest of the notes are generated by hammering on or pulling off and workouts like this totally took my fretting hand technique to a completely different level in the last two years. I made sure to attach a total of five exercises just like this one to the post on Patreon. So if you're a member over there, make sure to download all of them. I think the exercise play along videos are especially helpful when it comes to your own personal practice routine. So yeah, I talked about this much too enthusiastically already. I spoiled the surprise, I guess. In my personal case and experience when it comes to fretting, and technique I do have to position this one right here in the daily block. If you're currently struggling with finger control, finger independence and fretting hand technique please make sure to include at least one legato workout in your practice routine and thank me in a couple of years. If you're in the mood for some epic instrumental guitar music right now make sure to follow me on Spotify the link is in the description and I will see you again in the next video. Once again the YouTube algorithm actually says that this one is a great choice in case you would like to keep on watching. Talk to you soon. Greetings from Vienna. Bye bye.